transfer rumors, contracts, injury news, everything you need to know in this video. Hey gone guys, hope everyone is doing well. Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be talking to you about our contract situation and the transfer rumor as well. But before we get into that, if you can just smash that like button and subscribe if you're new, that will be awesome. So I thought I'll start with the most ridiculous one and that is Joe Hart. But instead of bashing him and being all negative, let's look at some positives on why we should bring him to Arsenal Football Club. Reason number one. He's a third choice goalkeeper at Burnley. He's played barely any games for them this season, which means that he won't be burnt out. Number two, he's not wanted at Burnley, which means we'll be able to get the deal done without any headaches. He's won the league. Joe, it's an easy name to pronounce, so we won't have any issues with that. And if he actually comes in, he'll be the second choice keeper, which means... He won't play much and he won't let in many goals. But in all seriousness, what the hell are we doing? Why are we going for Joe Hart? I know Burnt Leno's injured, but we still have Emmy Martinez there that can do a job. We've got Matt Macy. I know his contract's about to end, but let's just extend his contract. And if not, you know, let's go out to Brazil or any other country, grab a young keeper that's promising, that might turn a profit, instead of going for Joe Hart. I'm sure his wages are going to be high and he's going to bring absolutely nothing to the team. So, you know, if he's third choice at Burnley, why the hell are we even looking at him? You know, he's finished, man. He's finished. So the next one we've got is our Brazilian superstar. And no, I'm not talking about Gabriel Martinelli. I'm talking about David Luiz. And it looks like Arsenal have offered him a one-year extension. And to be honest, man, I'm very disappointed. I'm pissed off, but if we look at the bigger picture, we've got centre-backs that are actually worse than him. And one of those centre-backs is Socrates. So if it it looks like the club is going in the David Luiz direction, which means that we'll most likely get rid of Socrates and maybe even one more centre-back. Not sure if that's going to be Mustafi or Rob Holding or... I doubt it's going to be Callum Chambers because he'll be recovering from that ACL and he was actually doing very well for us. Um, before he got injured so my bet is it's between Socrates and Mustafi that's going to be seeing their way out at the end of the season and look it's only going to be another year we're going to have to put up with this guy for another year um, all I can do is laugh at the moment you know but that's the situation the club's in at the moment so hopefully we can sign another centre back I know Saliba's coming in next season but you know, if Luis can be a third choice centre back or whatever, or even a fourth choice, it's better for us that he won't be playing. Or we can just put him in the midfield since our midfield is trash at the moment. You know, at least he can pass the ball, he can pick out a pass, a uh, long ball as well. And, you know, defensively he's okay. I think he'd do a better job than some of the midfielders we've got at the moment. But that also moves us on to Pablo Mari, or Pablo Marie, whatever you want to call him. Arsenal are going to commit and sign him on a permanent basis, even though he got injured against City and he's out for the season. But I think it, he's shown Arteta enough for him to um, warrant a permanent position at the club. So congrats to him. Look, I haven't seen too much of him to really say if he's good enough or not. From what I've seen, he's looked decent. He hasn't got much speed, but he makes up for it with his intelligence, with his positioning. His height, he's got a good passing game, so, you know, speedy recovery for him, and congratulations, bro, welcome to Arsenal. So the next player we got is Cedric Suarez, and it looks like Arsenal are going to sign him on a permanent four-year deal, and I think he's just going to be a backup right back, because, you know, I've seen him play for Southampton, he's alright, he's not too bad, but... Uh, to be honest, I don't know if he can get in front of Bellerin, and Bellerin's not even that good. If it was up to me, I'd get rid of him. But, look, we got we got a backup right back now, so it's, it's time to move on and rectify the other positions that we need. Alright, so now we've got some injury news, and we'll start off with the negative one first, and that is Gabriel Martinelli. 
According to Arteta in his press conference, Martinelli was at training and the last kick of training, he injured his knee. He clashed with a player and it looks like he's done some serious damage to his knee. So he's going to be undergoing some scans just to see the the extent of the injury. But let's hope it's not too bad. You know, let's hope he hasn't done any serious damage because to be honest, man, this guy is a very, very promising young player. And I actually wanted to see him play against Southampton. So I, I think he's been a bit hard done by, by not playing any part in these games. You know, I think, you know, I'm sure he works his ass off at training and he, I'm sure he deserves a spot over some of these players on the team. But yeah, best of luck to him. I hope it's not too bad. And we'll move over to some positive news now. And that is an injury update on Burnt Leno. Now, Burnt Leno... Uh, if you guys don't know what happened, he um, went to jump up in the air against Brighton and Mope gave him a little shoulder and he kind of hyperextended his knee when he landed and he got stretched off. He was in excruciating pain and we've got the test results back and he's done no damage to his ligaments. So that is very, very positive news. And, you know, I just want to tell you guys a little story that happened to me a couple of years ago, actually. The same injury. I thought I tore my ligaments in my knee as well. So I jumped in the air for a header. And I landed right on my right on my leg. Straight knee. And I thought I busted my whole knee up. My knee was swollen. I couldn't walk for a few days. And yeah, when I got the test results back, there was no damage done. And there's a thing in your knee called a fat pad. So I think that's what got inflamed. And... From what I can see, I think that's what happened to Burnt Leno as well. So, yeah, he'd probably need a month or maybe a month and a half to recover from that. But, um, yeah, he should be all right. Once he can get the swelling down, he should be good to start walking and slowly jogging again. So, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you all next time. I'm out.